Jeez, that was intense. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I hope you lot are doing well and welcome to the match review of Chelsea's 2-1 loss to Manchester City away at the Etihad where I'm going to say it now they had the lion's share of possession now that's only happened twice uh, for Pep Guardiola when he's been uh, managing Manchester City so that's pretty mental Lampard's Chelsea played very very well at times and as per usual a couple of naive moments but generally this was a very very good game and we're going to dissect all of that in today's match preview so going into this the pressure was kind of off Chelsea they're just doing their thing in the Premier League at the moment no one really expects them to challenge for the title they're just sort of progressing as a team everyone knows the narrative about Frank Lampard's Chelsea but the pressure was on Pep Guardiola's side to stay in the title race and keep up with Liverpool especially with Liverpool snatching a winner earlier in the day and you know what Leicester winning as well City have got to think about this kind of stuff now but a quick reminder to you guys to subscribe to Football Therapy if you've not yet done so for daily Chelsea FC content and quick plug as well please do subscribe to Yan Plays if you like like hilarious FIFA content links in the top of the description go subscribe to Yan plays all right let's talk about what happened in this game and open up the analysis screen next to me as per usual I've used the who scored match center to give you context of how the game went statistically like I said this was actually quite the ding dong remember away at the Etihad a very strong city team granted they don't have their first choice defense but you know Mares coming in a midfield of Kevin De Bruyne Rodri Silva you know Mendy at left back he's a baller regardless to what you think of him defensively and of course Edison coming back in Frank Lampard was smart in this game he lined up with the same midfield that he's played twice against Liverpool that basically performed really really well he had Kepa between the sticks his usual centre-back partnership of Tomori and Zuma he had Emerson starting on the left who would later make way for Rhys James and as Blaquetto started on the right who would move over on the left when Rhys James comes on the formidable Chelsea midfield consisted of Jorginho who really showed how excellent he's on the ball a lot of the time in this game even though he had to get substituted because he was on a yellow and he was getting a little bit nibbly. Kovacic who's obviously a great ball progressor and really press resistant like Jorginho and Kante who apparently is still an attacking midfielder. The front three consisted of Tammy Abraham no surprise, Willian no surprise and Pulisic great he's not injured so generally no surprise. All three goals came in the first half of this game and generally it was an incredibly exciting game you could tell City were the more nervous side out of the two. Chelsea were incredibly comfortable coaxing City out trying to get you know them to press forwards and then playing out. Chelsea played with a lot of confidence. Chelsea's centre-backs, but more importantly, their midfielders were really good at playing in tight spaces, and that's what they wanted. They wanted to suck City's midfielders in, or just general outf outfield players in, and they wanted to play out to create spaces to combine. And they did that early doors. They look very, very good indeed. The game goes up and down and is incredibly exciting, and Chelsea actually maintain the lion's share of possession throughout this game, so it shows you how much of the ball they were enjoying passing it round Manchester City's players. Chelsea break the deadlock with an N'Golo Kante goal who apparently loves scoring against all Manchester clubs, two against United and two against City now. A wonderful attacking combination from Chelsea, Kante wriggles away, takes a shot, it kind of a bit of a slow finish but Tammy Abraham's there to finish it off in case it doesn't go in. Chelsea go 1-0 up and absolutely deserved lead away in the Etihad. Chelsea's lead lasts for about 8 minutes before Kevin De Bruyne whips one sort of straight towards the goal and to be honest if it doesn't take what is a double deflection it does look like Kepa is going to save it so it's a little bit unfortunate for Chelsea and for Kepa and uh, leveling it up from here this is what's kind of gives City confidence to grow into the game more I don't have too much sympathy for Kepa I have sympathy for Chelsea in this situation but Kepa later on does a pass out to Aguero who skies it over the bar but it was a moment where you think why are you trying to take another inch off my hairline bro but in the opening half an hour Chelsea have been the better footballing side statistically they've been creating more chances they've been doing really really well and obviously they've got the lion's share of the possession now you could put this down 
to City being nervous due to the situation and the narrative that they find themselves in, but Frank Lampard's Chelsea are playing very, very well. Exciting, nonchalant, attacking football. Now, even if the Kevin De Bruyne goal was a bit fortuitous with the double deflection, the goal that takes them into the lead certainly isn't. It's a wonderful piece of individual mastery from Mares, who I don't think was having a very good game up until this point, but he picks up the ball, throws his way around and basically wriggles around a couple of people and does what is an excellent finish. So that puts City 2-1 up. But the thing is with Frank Lampard's Chelsea, as they've proven all season, they never give up, their heads don't drop, and like I said, the pressure's really off them so they can express themselves a lot. The first half ends, and yeah, it's 2-1 to City, but Chelsea have 55% possession in this half. Again, I've said this is like a, almost like a record-breaking thing, and there's both teams have had a few shots, both teams have had two shots on target, City scored both of theirs, Chelsea only scored one, and like I said, one of City's goals was a double deflection. Now, I don't want to take anything away from City, because it's not like they played bad in this game. Both teams played very well, and both teams were giving each other a lot of problems. Frank Lampard doesn't mess about, he takes off Emerson, because he sees he's not having the great game, and like I said, he does the switch where he makes Aspi go on the left, he plays Reese James on the right, and Pep can see this, he knows the threat that Reese James is, he swaps his wingers around, and there's a little sort of tactical shift. Later on in the game, Frank Lampard tries to go for the jugular, he takes off Tammy Abraham, he's been pretty good, but not great, and he puts on Michy Batshuayi, and he takes off Jorginho, who generally has been excellent in the game, but he's got a yellow card, I think he's conceded a couple of fouls at that point, so he takes Jorginho off and puts Mount on, goes to a 4-2-3-1 with uh, Kovacic and Kante in the pivot, and Mount in the number 10. Pep also makes all three changes, I think a couple of them forced via injury, so everyone's gone for broke here. To be honest, towards the latter stages of the second half Chelsea are piling on the pressure more and more and more City do get sporadic chances and they end up taking a lot of shots not necessarily a load on target but in terms of possession hence Chelsea having more possession in the game they're putting up like up them City in their final third and they're combining well creating chances but again perhaps it's that little bit of naivety a little bit of lack of chemistry because they're a new side especially comparatively to Pep's City side who obviously matured for a few years now and it's obviously these small nuances that make the difference it becomes a little bit of a ding dong at the end you could tell City you get nervy again, Chelsea go up, they go down, they concede chances, and really, if there's one message I want to get across here, it was a great game of football in terms of both sides playing attacking football. Sure, there was the narrative of City being nervous at times and therefore dropping their levels, and sure, there's the narrative of Chelsea being a young, well, perhaps this wasn't a young team, but a young side generally, and showing naivety under the new coach Frank Lampard, and both displaying imperfections. In the final minute of stoppage time, Raheem Sterling has a goal ruled offside. To be honest, it's one of those contentious things, man. If I was a City fan, I'd be annoyed at that. I think maybe Chelsea, I don't really know how to feel about it. You can understand as an opposition fan, maybe he was offside, but I don't know how I feel about VAR. Obviously, as a Chelsea fan, you're relieved at that point, especially how generally it came from a poor piece of Chelsea defending. Now, again, Chelsea are obviously prone to naive defending every now and again, but generally, they showed great defending for the most part in this game. And then Chelsea go up the other end and they could have easily equalised in the last moments of the game. But the full-time whistle goes, Manchester City 2, Chelsea 1, a very entertaining game of football indeed. Chelsea is still in the top four comfortably, or the top four, you know, conversation argument. I know Jose's going to fancy his Tottenham side to rise up now. Arsenal drop points, Leicester 1, they're looking superb. And the league's looking very exciting. So let's talk about some player performances and get rid of this analysis screen. Right, Kepa, not great. <laughs> He is a good, skillful goalkeeper. Obviously, Spain's number one. You can see, while well, he's comfortable playing out of the press, but he makes a mistake. He's still quite young, I guess. And maybe he got, gets inside his head a little bit. He, he, he does want to keep... He, he doesn't crumble. He doesn't collapse. But this is by no means a good performance. So, pretty poor for me. Emerson hasn't been great of late. It's a bit disappointing. Obviously, he came off as well. Emerson, at the beginning of the season, was immense for Chelsea. He was one of the highest rated plays in terms of, like, performance metrics. But he's dropped off and you can tell why the Chilwell connection is getting hotter and hotter and why as is moving over to that spot and Reese James is coming on. Frank will learn from that and maybe if he could 
play this game again, in hindsight, he'd start with Aspi at left back and he'd want Reese James as a weapon on the right. Generally, both centre backs are pretty good. I like how they're comfortable coming out, they're comfortable passing. Tomori, for the couple of mistakes he makes per game, because he's still very, very young, he makes up with how good he is on the ball and generally how confident he is generally. So I've, both of them did pretty good. It's, you know, you could have, like, two goals at the Yeti had when Chelsea are playing attacking football with more possession and you're vulnerable in the transition. To concede those two goals, like I said, wicked deflection for one of them. Meh, I, I forgive him pretty good generally. Now the midfield was sublime. Jorginho was excellent for me. He showed what he's all about. He's dominating that midfield, telling people where to go, making interceptions, drawing people in very, very close just to play out and make space for his homies around him. Again, Kovacic very much the same, more of a ball carrier, but both played very, very well for my money, but I do understand why Jorginho had to come off because of the booking. Kante, superb, and he very much is the least defensive out of the three, which is mental if you think about that now. The amount of times he got forward and he was combining with Willian, or indeed Tammy Abraham, was amazing. Obviously, he scored a great goal, and... He, I, I think he's more of an attacking midfielder now than a defending midfielder. Obviously, he's still an interceptive midfielder. But man, what has Kante become? Superb. Maybe man of the match for a Chelsea perspective. Willian, also very, very good. He was always an outlet. You always felt like he could do something, you know. He had a couple of shots off. He, I think he combined with Kante for the goal. I need to double check. But he, he looked threatening. A couple of frustrating moments. But for all the good he brings to the team, Willian... Uh, you feel a lot more confident with him starting there than not starting there. And that's a new feeling with Willian, so excellent from that guy. Pulisic started very well, in my opinion. He had a couple of moments that I was like, man, kid's a baller, nice, you know, decent. The way he wriggled out, he made a couple of good runs where he didn't get the ball. Faded a little bit, he sort of run, uh, he'll get better and better as he embeds himself more in the team. Had that not been Manchester City, he'd probably have scored a goal early on and maybe burn out anyway. But, you know, I'll give him a pass for not being brilliant, but I think had hudson Adoy been fit for this game, I think he would have been one of the substitutions for Callum. And Tammy started well, um, got a bit frustrated, but yeah, maybe not his game. Batshuayi didn't seem to be the answer when he came on. I don't think he did very well at all. He always runs offside, and I know he needs that one chance, and he almost had that one chance when he took it to turn. That's probably what Lampard was gambling on. But uh, Aspi, pretty decent. He's a so he's gone back to a solid like seven out of ten, especially with his versatility moving over. That's very valuable for Chelsea. So yeah, you know, decent enough. And Reese James didn't really get enough time to look at him properly, but you know, very fast, very good. He didn't when he had the ball at that part of the game. He didn't have many options. So really, you want him running at people and putting in great deliveries. He put on one ball that was superb that no one met, but pff, whatever. So yeah, an absolute ding dong. Fair enough, Chelsea didn't win, but they put in a great performance in what was a good game and they can take positives out of it. So what do you think? Get down in the comments below. I want to hear your thoughts and opinions on the game. Who do you think performed well? Who do you think performed badly? Do you agree or disagree with me? And remember, I'm telling you now, subscribe to Yam Plays. It's the link in the top of the description. Please do. It's a lot of fun if you want to watch me get completely swept up in a FIFA campaign. It's funny. You can also follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. I'm out, guys. You lot enjoy the football and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double, silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle, yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble, I only love this paper, sorry I don't I let me baby.